<clears throat> All right, so continuing our talk on uh, volume of cones and spheres uh, today. So yesterday you should have uh, done rec uh, rectangular prisms and uh, cylinders, and today cones and spheres. So we're actually going to start with this, uh, with watching a video. We're going to watch YouTube from YouTube. And so uh, this video kind of shows um, why the volumes of cones and spheres are what they are. So I'll let this play and uh, kind of describe what's happening during the video. So he's got a sphere, a cone, and a cylinder. And what he was just showing was that they're all of equal height. And if the uh, height is equal for all of them, then what that means is uh, that the diameter and the radius are the same. And that's what he's showing here as well. So, taking some dyed liquid from the cone, pouring it in to the cylinder that has the same height as well as diameter and radius. And then a second one. third. And so what you should notice is that the third one took it right to the top. So that means that we can get three volumes worth of cones into a cylinder that has the same diameter And, uh, and height. Now filling up the sphere and pouring the sphere into the cylinder. And what we end up noticing is it's two-thirds. So a sphere will fill up two-thirds of a cylinder with equal height and diameter, and then just showing that the cone, once again, will make up one-third of it. And so if you were to actually add the volume of the, the cone and the, uh, and the sphere, you would get the entire cylinder. Okay, so that's the proof of, uh, of the formula um, that we're going to use to help with these, uh, show these. So starting off, volume of a cone. So as we just saw, a cone, it took three of them to fill it up. So that means that it takes up one-third of the space that a cylinder with the same radius or diameter and height would. Okay, so on a cone, down here at the base of the cone um, is our circle. So we have a circular base again, just like with the cylinder. And so we are going to be interested to get it in the radius. And then we need to make sure when we're given the height, the height needs to be from the base all the way to the peak of the cone. So this measurement here, and that'll be our height that we use for that. And so our uh, formula is going to be that V is going to be equal to, so the volume, is going to be one-third pi r squared this time. So pi r squared, again, remember, was yesterday from the uh, cylinder is the area of the circle. And then pi r squared times h would give us the entire cylinder. One-third of that um, is the uh, now giving us the cone because we know that it, we just saw that it takes three cones to make up the cylinder. So if we take one-third of it. Um, but multiplying by one-third can be a little tricky, and, and so multiplying by one-third um, is the same thing as dividing by three. So I prefer to use this version. 
So pi r squared times the height, and then just divide it all by 3. When I'm uh, finding the volume of the cone, um, because that way, uh, when I put it in the calculator, I'm just multiplying and then just dividing by 3. So multiplying just like we did yesterday with the um, cylinder, and then just divide by 3 at the end. Okay, so some examples where we do that. So finding the volumes here, rounding to the nearest hundredths if we need to. So this cone is laid on its side. Again, though, this will be the, our base, even though it's not on the bottom, but it's the circular part. So this time the dots only go halfway across. So that is the radius. Our height of our cone is 12. And so for the volume here, we're going to do pi times the radius is 7 squared times our height, which is 12, but then divide it all by 3. Okay, don't forget about the divide by 3 part. Now you can break it up in your calculator. Um, again, we'll use 3.14 as an estimation for pi times 7 squared, or 7 times 7, if you don't have a squared button there, times 12. And I can do that part first, and then divide that by 3, or it's uh, you'll get the same answer if you just put it all in the calculator at once. So we can just do 3.14 times 7 squared times 12, divided by 3, and put it all in there. Uh, your calculator knows PEMDAS. And so we get uh, 615.44. And feet was the measurement, but once again, volume is three-dimensional, so we have to cube our units on the volume there. Okay, for uh, number eight here, I guess it is, um, we've got six as the diameter this time. It goes all the way across, so that's my diameter. So that means the radius is half of that, so that would be three inches there. My height for this one is nine inches. A little more room this time, we'll do it down here. So volume is equal to pi times the radius squared times the height. And then because it's a cone, divide by 3. So 3.14 times 3 squared, or 9, times 9, divide by 3, 84.78. Cubed. Okay, and then one more. This one's inverted, so this time the, the circle for the base is on the top of the figure. Uh, we have the radius this time and the height. Pi times 8 squared times 18 and then divide by 3. So 3.14 times 8 squared, times 18, and then divide it by 3. And looks like we get 1,205.76 meters cubed. Okay, so that's the uh, volume of a cone. So now to go on to a volume of a sphere, uh, remember back to the video, uh, when he filled the sphere up and poured it back into the cylinder, it filled the cylinder two-thirds of the way. So a sphere takes up two-thirds uh, the space of a cylinder with the same once again radius or uh, and height. Okay, now, um, to derive the entire formula here, um, if I were to think about what height is this time, um, if I were to make a cylinder out of this um, and kind of put it next to it here, so if I were to draw a cylinder, imagine it had um, the same <laughs> diameter and, and here. Um, but what that means is uh, that the height this time, um, instead of uh, just being height and calling it height in the cylinder, or sorry, in a sphere, um, we're not actually ever going to have the height. But if I look at what it is, that the height is this time, um, is since a sphere um, is uh, 
circular all the way around, and basically if you took a circle and spun it 360 degrees, that's how you could make a sphere. Um, what we're getting here is this distance all the way across, well this would be the diameter. Um, and so when I go to multiply by the, the height this time, instead of multiplying by the height, it's just always going to be the diameter that I'm multiplying by. But remember the diameter um, is two times of the radius. Okay, so if I kind of put into words what I'm, what I'm getting at here, uh, the volume then of our, of our sphere, um, if it's two-thirds, the volume of our cylinder, which again is found by pi r squared times h, but remember this time h is actually the diameter. But the diameter, remember, is equal to twice the radius. So if I substitute in Two r instead of uh, d there. Now what I'm going to have is I'm going to have an equation or a formula that only has r in it. But notice that what I could then do is I could even simplify this even further. And so if I simplify it even further, multiplying the two out to the two thirds, um, because since those are are both um, rational numbers, I can multiply them together. Uh, two times two thirds actually makes four thirds pi. And then the radius, since there's radius squared there, and multiply it by one more radius here, we would end up to with radius to the third power. Okay, so um, can kind of use any one of these combinations of things, but the formula that we typically use for finding a sphere is the volume is equal to four thirds pi r cubed. Um, or another way, again, kind of more calculator friendly, is if I make the 4 and I um, turn the rest of this into a fraction uh, and have, just multiply the 4 times the pi r squared, or pi r, pi r cubed, excuse me, this time. It's 4 pi r cubed and then divide the whole thing by 3. Okay, and that's typically an uh, easier way to, to put it into the calculator. Or you can do the four-thirds, um, but usually you'll want to put the four-thirds into parentheses uh, there first. Okay, uh, call and question here before we move on and look at examples with that. So describe and correct a mistake made in finding the volume of the following cone. So we've got a cone uh, here. It had a diameter. Um, notice the line goes all the way across, so of six meters, and a height of eight meters. And they did volume is equal to one third. The capital B uh, stands for base area times height. And so they did one third times pi, six squared times eight. And then they got 96 pi uh, m to the third. Um, they're leaving this answer with pi included in it, um, which is fine to do. Um, you don't have to necessarily multiply by pi. This is called uh, the more, like, this is like an exact um, answer, just because when we multiply by pi, since it's an irrational number, it's always going to be a rounded form. Um, but uh, hopefully you caught the issue there. Uh, the issue is that they use 6 as their radius, but really 6 is the diameter. So, so need to cut the diameter in half to get the radius. So the proper calculation um, would be either one-third or pi times three squared times eight and then divide by three. And so proper volume looks like 75.36 meters cubed. Okay, um, so we're going to transfer this formula for our sphere over to the next page because we're going to do a couple examples now. So the <clears throat> for finding the volume of these, again, the formula that we're going to be using here 
is volume is equal to 4 times pi times the radius cubed this time, which remember means multiply by itself three times, and then divide it all by three. Okay, so um, when you're given a sphere, the only measurement you need is either just the diameter or the radius. Um, but the one that we actually need in our calculation is just the radius. So if you are given the diameter like this, just like with the spheres or the, or sorry, just like with the uh, cylinders or the, the cones, this is the diameter then. So radius then would be half of that. So this time that's five inches. So volume is equal to four times pi times our radius, which is 5, and this time again remember it's cubed, so to the third power, and then divide by 3. Okay, so as far as putting cubed in the calculator, so a couple of options here. Um, again, you can just multiply it out by itself, so I could do 4 times 3.14 times 5 times 5 times 5, so that's one option, right? Um, and then divide that by 3. So let's see, we end up getting 523 and a third here. So I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth, like it says. So that would be 523.33 inches cubed. Um, or um, on calculators like this, uh, there is no button that gives you to the third. However, you can um, put in, uh, or you can hit a button that, that tells the calculator you're using an exponent. And that's actually right above the x squared. So um, it's often referred to as a carrot, um, but uh, I don't, don't really know exactly <laughs> why we would call it the carrot button, uh, but this is x squared, and the button right above it will, is an exponent button. So the way that I put it in, the way that I use that button, um, so if I wanted to do 5 to the third, then I'm going to do 5, hit the button, and that's going to tell that the next number is an exponent, and that would be to the third there. And I can do the same thing if I want to do like 5 to the sixth, or 2 to the 100th, or something like that, put in the number press the exponent button, and then put in the exponent. So that's 5 to the third. So if I were to put it in using this formula, it'd be 4 times 3.14 still, times 5 to the third, divide by 3. And you see that we get the same answer there. Okay, so either method. Uh, for the next example, this is the radius we're given. Line only goes halfway across. So my radius is 4 this time. So V equals 4 pi times 4 to the third divide by 3. So 4 times 3.14 times 4 cubed divide by 3, 267.95. Five, the 4 will round up to a 5 there, feet cubed. Okay, and then one more, this time um, all the way across with the line, so that's the diameter. Radius, therefore, is half of that, so it'll be 2 millimeters then for the radius. So V equals 4 times pi times 2 cubed divided by 3. 4 times 3.14 times 2 to the third divide by 3, 33.49 after rounding millimeters cubed. Okay. Uh, in call question number two, it says this shape is called a hemisphere. What would you think the volume formula would be for a hemisphere? Well, a hemisphere, if you think about it, um, is half of an entire sphere. So if I had the volume for an entire sphere was 4 pi r cubed divided by 3, and I took and I divided that whole thing, divided all of this by 2, well, what that does is dividing it by 2, instead of having 4 thirds of it, it's going to cut that in half to only 2 thirds. So if you wanted to, you could either do it this way, you could multiply it out and then just divide your overall answer by 2 if you were finding the volume of a hemisphere, or really, it'll just be 2 thirds pi r cubed, or 2 times pi times r cubed divided by 3. Okay. Uh, do the same thing as yesterday. Um, I'll put the conclusions in my completed copy of this, but uh, maybe give you a chance to try to go through those there first before you take a look at that. 
Um, in the summary, the volume of a cone is one-third the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a sphere is two-thirds of it, the uh, of equal base and height, and then uh, volume formula, we're going to have for a cone, V is equal to either one-third or pi r squared times h divided by 3 for the cone, and for our sphere, as we saw, 4 pi r cubed, and then divide by 3. So the cubed um, in the formulas only shows up when it's the sphere. That's the only one that has a cube. So there's some people that start to get confused about when to use the cube and not. Only for the spheres do we have the cube. Um, for the cylinders and the cones, it's just pi r squared. Um, and then times the height, and then if it's a cone, divide that by three. All right, so there's a worksheet that goes with this. Uh, tomorrow, a review of, uh, that'll just have a mix of all of the, the figures we've talked about, um, and then the quiz to follow from that. So reach out to me if you have questions about things. Uh, we'll be doing our live Google Meet tomorrow. Um, I can help answer questions in person if you need it. So there we go, and good luck.